Hello, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful event. I am, it is my honor to introduce Bambi Salcedo. Salcedo. Today, it is my absolute pleasure. She is our keynote speaker, activist, and president of Trans Latina Coalition. In 2022, she's the CSW Distinguished Leader in Feminism Honoree. Welcome, Bambi. Bambi is a national and international transgender Latina woman who received her master's degree in Latino studies from CSU Los Angeles. She is the president and CEO of Trans Latina Coalition, a national organization that focuses on addressing issues facing transgender Latinas in the US. Salcido has also developed the Center for Violence Prevention and Transgender Wellness in Los Angeles. It's a very important organization that I hope our students have a chance to participate in as well. Her remarkable and wide ranging activist work has brought voice and visibility to the trans community and many overlapping communities and issues such as immigrants, HIV, youth, LGBT, and incarcerated in the incarcerated and Latinas. Through her leadership, she has birthed several organizations that have created community where there was none and advocated for the rights, dignity, and humanity of those who have been without a voice. In 2016, she was invited to participate in the summit, the United State of Woman at the White House, where she shared the stage with then Vice President Biden at the opening plenary session. She has also served as speaker and panelist at several national and international conferences. A documentary about her life, Trans Visible, Bambi Salcido's story, was released in 2014. Salcido has been featured in People in Espanol, Latina Magazine, Cosmopolitan, and the Los Angeles Times, Los Angeles Magazine, Out 100, and in the HBO documentary, The Trans List. We are so very fortunate to have you here today, Bambi. So please join me in welcoming her for her keynote address, Trans Latina Resilience, Past, Present, and Future. Now, eh? Well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Juana, for the beautiful introduction. Um, bueno, primero que nada, quiero dar gracias a mi creador, mi poder superior, por darme la oportunidad de estar aquí con ustedes, darme un día más de vida. Y obviamente también quiero honrar la tierra en la cual estamos y uh, quiero honrar su presencia. Um, hello, beautiful people. I know that some of you were not able to understand what I just said, but it is always um, a custom that I acknowledge my creator, uh, who I choose to call my higher power, for giving me the opportunity to breathe one more day. I also honor the land where we stand, where, where all of us are standing on today. I am greeting you from Tangva land in Los Angeles. And um, I also honor the beautiful and amazing presence uh, of you. Um, and I also hope that uh, all of us, all of you are having a beautiful and amazing and joyous day. I know that there's a lot going on in the world, uh, but I hope that our hearts in this very moment are filled with um, grace and love. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart to the beautiful and amazing people who thought that I was worthy of being here to share my experience and strength and hope with all of you. Um, thank you to the UCLA Center for the Studies of Women uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to be here and for acknowledging me as the woman that I am. As we know, oftentimes, uh, in women specific spaces, um, trans women are not acknowledged or recognized or even seen as the women that we are. And so I, I do want for you to know that this means so much to me 
and I'm sure it means so much to uh, other of my siblings. So thank you. I do want to um, acknowledge that I am a very privileged trans, Latina, mujer, immigrante, indocumentada, who has had the privilege to, um, to overcome many challenges um, and who has had the opportunity to overturn those challenges and horrible experiences into opportunities. I think it's important to recognize that um, trans Latinx people, particularly those who are undocumented, those of us who are or have been uh, sex workers, those of us who have been incarcerated, uh, those of us who are survivors of sexual assault, um, those of us who have who are survivors of violence, not just physical and verbal, but also sexual violence. Um, and I am included in all of, all of those individuals. Um, but it's important to understand that uh, we have been marginalized for many institutions as we have tried to also contribute to those institutions. Um, and even from spaces, right? Like as I, as I mentioned, um, and women spaces and LGBTQ spaces and Latino spaces and immigrant rights movement spaces uh, and many different spaces and movements, um, trans Latinx individuals have been, have, uh, been marginalized and oppressed, um, but we also have been able to um, to overcome and to really um, show our resiliency. Um, you know, um, I, I, I can certainly, um, you know, name that I, I and many of us, right, stand on the shoulders of uh, many of our ancestors. Um, but I, for this particular session and today, I do want to acknowledge um, in, in give honor to Silvia Rivera, who uh, was one of our sisters who, uh, again, was pushed and uh, pushed to the side and marginalized even within the LGBT movement in the early stages of the, um, what they call gay liberation movement, right? Um, nonetheless, um, you know, all of us have been able to learn from her uh, to learn from her resiliency, to learn from uh, who she was as a guerrera, an amazing and incredible warrior um, who has teach us or who has taught us um, that despite of um, the marginalization and the oppression that we experience as trans Latinx uh, individuals uh, or trans Latinas, right? Um, we can still overcome if um, we understand that we do have power. And so um, that certainly has been my experience. Um, that certainly um, has been what has given me the opportunity to grow as a person, to um, grow as, um, you know, as a leader. Um, I, don't necessarily consider myself an activist, although people do consider me an activist, but I do consider myself as a servant to the people. Um, and I am privileged. And, you know, with uh, understanding my privilege, um, it's important to understand for me, um, my responsibility with my people. Um, as, I, as it was mentioned in the introduction, in my introduction by uh, Mishwana, I, um, I am the CEO of a national uh, advocacy organization, um, but my definition of a CEO is community elevated officer uh, because it has been my community and many colleagues and many um, 
individuals who I call my siblings also, uh, and not just because they're trans, but because they are um, my siblings in the struggle. Um, and all of, all of them and you know, all of you have uh, been able to uplift me and to um, support me through all of these years. I have been doing uh, community work for almost 25 years. And um, this has only been possible because of the contributions that all of you have um, put into me for believing in me, for, um, for acknowledging me and for believing that I, I could do great things, even when I don't believe that I could do great things. Um, so I do want to um, thank you. Thank you for all of that, um, for uplifting me to be the person that I am today. Uh, certainly I could not be today here. Um, I could not be here today if it wasn't because of my spirituality, right? I think uh, it's important to also recognize that um, our spirituality has supported us to overcome marginalization and oppression, uh, but that has also supported us to, uh, to continue to thrive and continue to understand that, that we are resilient people and that we are able to create changes um, despite the fact that society um, always has tell us that we are not supposed to exist, that we are not supposed to be here and they were not even capable. Um, nonetheless, to me, what has helped me to understand um, and to see the possibilities is um, certainly through my spirituality. Um, and my spirituality comes from, uh, from ancestral roots, uh, from ancestral lineage of uh, warriors and uh, people who have resisted, um, but also that have been connected to our spiritual being. And that certainly it's uh, my experience and something that I, I hold very dear. I do want to also say that, um, you know, many people uh, think that because trans people are in the eye of the media, um, meaning that we are participating in movies, that we're participating in um, magazines, that we are uh, primarily in the entertainment uh, industry more visible, um, that our social conditions have changed. And that is not true. Um, you know, there certainly has been in the last, I'm gonna say five, five to six years, um, there has been more visibility, uh, but the same issues that I experienced when I started my transition, uh, when I was 18, uh, the same issues that trans people and trans Latinx individuals are uh, experiencing today. And so it's important for us to recognize that. And that is why um, the Trans Latino Coalition um, has been influential into the broader trans movement and to making sure that um, we as an organization, uh, not just resist, but that we also create um, alternatives of life for all of us, right? And so um, we as an organization believe that um, we can empower our people through direct service provision, right? And that is why uh, we created um, a multi-purpose, multi-service space here in Los Angeles. Um, we are the biggest trans-led organization in Los Angeles that has a, multi a multitude of services specifically designed to support trans, gender non-conforming and intersex people. Um, it's important to recognize that uh, if people are struggling with the basic things that helps us to, um, to survive, um, then we're not able to organize. And that is why for us as an organization, it's important that we um, provide a community 
and not just with the basic services like food and housing and uh, employment and you know those basic things right but also that we support our community to to thrive right then we move our community from survival into thrival um, and that is why we also uh, do policy work so we are an organization that, that functions with two arms one the empowerment uh, of our community through the direct service provision but also um, the changes that need to happen in the institutions that have marginalized us for centuries. Um, and that is why we influence policy. That is why in 2020, um, we um, made history in the state of California, uh, introducing a piece of legislation that for the first time we learned uh, was um, introduced by uh, trans people. Um, and so uh, Assembly Bill 2218 came to be a reality in the in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, there's now some resources um, across the state um, through this fund. And we're currently um, are doing budget advocacy to ensure that um, the resources that our community need are allocated. Um, and you know, we that's why we want to invite you to participate, to um, to follow us on social media so that you know uh, what we are doing. Um, I also want to invite you to please um, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we need to get a thousand subscribers in order for our organization to start monetizing through that. Um, and there's amazing content there. Um, please, you know, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe and um, see some of the stuff that we have there. I know that we're running out of time, but one of the things that I do want to, um, to mention is that, you know, the future of trans Latinas and trans the trans Latinx community, uh, I am going to say that is bright. Um, we as an organization are going to make sure that we continue to resist to the marginalization that we have experienced for centuries, that we continue to strategize to ensure that we create those plans uh, for us to find a way to assert ourselves within our society, that we acknowledge us who we are and that we are um, you know, provided the resources that we need. Um, we envision our organization to be an organization that um, continues to uplift and support other trans-led groups and organizations. Uh, we're currently uh, fiscally sponsoring uh, seven trans-led groups and organizations. Um, we are going to be an organization that will provide um, the resources that our community need. Uh, and we are certainly going to continue to fight to ensure that those who have the privilege and the power to ensure that there's a change in the landscape of our lives, that we hold those accountable. Um, and so we want to invite you to be part of, uh, of this change, that we want to invite you to be part of this vision and uh, contribute in whatever way that you can. Right, um, I'm currently, you know, trying to get a, a grant writer that helps us to write grants. As you know, um, things get crazier for me, right? Um, and so, um, you know, we we can certainly um, benefit from the support that uh, you all can offer. Um, again, I want to invite you to see. Um, the shorts that we created um, that are um, Trans Latinx Migrations, Life, Love, and Triumphs. They are, we're releasing three short documentaries uh, every week. Um, this Wednesday, uh, we have released the ninth, um, um, yeah, the ninth 
short documentary. Uh, there are amazing stories um, that were uh, directed and created by, uh, by Armando Ibanez, who's an amazing and docu queer director who we partner with. Um, I am going to stop there for now. Um, I know that I, I, mean, I can talk forever. Um, I have so much to say, but I also know that our time is limited. Um, but I do, um, I, I am going to provide a uh, closing remark um, after the Q&A section. Once again, I want to thank you so much for your presence, for listening to me, and for thinking that I have something important to say. Thank you so much. Um, do I continue? <laughs> Hello. Uh, um, uh, hi, thank you so, so much, uh, Bambi, for that powerful and inspiring keynote. Um, we will now move into a conversation about the topics you've addressed, uh, followed by a Q&A with questions from the audience. Um, so uh, I am pleased to introduce Vanessa Wari, who will be in conversation with Bambi um, and who will moderate the Q&A. Vanessa uh, is a PhD student in the social welfare program at the UCLA Luskin School of Public Affairs. She's also um, a lead on the team for a CSW based initiative called Just Research, Trans Futures in Health and Scientific Knowledge. Um, this initiative is working for a future in which research about transgender, gender nonconforming and intersex or TGI people is relevant to and rooted in the knowledge priorities and practices of TGI people in communities and in which community researchers are valued, well-resourced and credited. So welcome Vanessa and thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. Hi Bambi. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to, to share your words of wisdom with us and to share your journey and your story. Um, it is incredibly powerful. And um, one of the first questions that I would like to, to direct your way, it, it stemmed from something I heard you say, you know, you had been doing this work for 25 years. And as somebody who is also a trans woman of color and has also sort of done this work, I sometimes struggle with how uh, the impact um, of doing work that so much of myself and my identity is wrapped up in. And so my question for you is, how do you maintain your joy doing this work and having done this work for 25 years? Um, thank you, um, sis. I'm, I'm gonna take the liberty to call you sis. Um, um, I, I, I so appreciate it and I am so honored that we get to share this space together. Um, you know, um, it's, it's, it certainly has been, you know, uh, moments where, you know, um, things have been really hard, you know. Um, I, um, I have, um, I have organized more um, funerals than celebrations for our community. You know, I um, I have seen many of my friends die, um, many been killed, um, and you know, I um, it, it's there has been moments to where like things are hard, right? Um, but um, what certainly fills my soul is um, when I see the light in, uh, in our people, right? Um, I have seen many, uh, many of my siblings who come here with um, shattered souls, really, right? Um, and I have seen, um, I have seen their development. Right, um, I have seen and known uh, young people who 
I've known since they were like 12, 13, 14, 15, um, and they're now 30, right? And I've seen how they have blossomed and developed and become the beautiful and amazing people who um, they are destined to be, right? Um, so those things are what fills my soul, right? Those things are the things that um, let me know that, um, that I'm being part of this amazing and incredible journey, right? Uh, which is our, our movement. And, and for me, you know, certainly my spirituality is what um, keeps me grounded. Um, you know, and for those, for those who know me as the person you know, I'm goofy, you know what I mean? Like I I I'm, I I goof a lot, right? And that also is something that um you know just gives me joy. Um you know, um it also gives me joy when I, you know, when I get completely naked and get on, you know, get on the on the sea, right? Like get the water as it's intended for me to receive it. Um, that gives me so much joy. Um, I mean, there's so many different things that um, that help me for me to continue to walk my path. Thank you. That was that was so beautiful, and I definitely resonate with those moments, especially from our time getting to work with the younger members of our community and, and being able to stay in touch with them and, and them reach out periodically to just let you know that they're doing so good or, you know, those, those moments where out of the blue, one of your sisters checks in to just say thank you for maybe connecting with them years ago. Um, you know, that that is always a, a great source of joy for me too. So you know, it's definitely refreshing to hear you you share that. Um, you know, something else that you said that really, really resonated with me was, you know, the discussion of your, your spirituality, um, you know, and how that's really driven you. And you talk about walking on a path um, that, that has led you to do this work. And, you know, we mentioned the work of our ancestors and, and so much of this is just so integral. I think, I feel as, as, as people of color, as trans folks, I mean, you've uplifted and honored Silvia Rivera, who is one of our ancestors. And, you know, something that also came up for me was, you know, like, so Silvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson, you know, they are, influential and we stand on their shoulders and you know for you has done so much great work here in the present you know in the future one day you know uh, your work now will contribute to inspiring a future generation um in the same way as that sylvia rivera and marcia p johnson have impacted the work that we do today um and so my question is what is your hopes and your message to our, you know, future nieces and nephews and little sisters and siblings of our community? And, and what do you hope that, you know, your work today will impact for them? Um, you know, um, I, I honestly don't think about, um, you know, how, the work that I do um, have influenced people or or will influence people. Um, I, I I feel like I am one of the chosen few, right? Um, that has got gotten the privilege, right, to um, to do what I do. You know, to you know, I often refer to myself as um, Yo soy un milagro, which means that I am a miracle, right? Because there were, have been so many instances to where like I was supposed to be dead, right? Um, but I made it. And so, um, well, I made it today, right? Um, and so for me, um, 
you know, what I think about is um, how do we, um, how do we create a world to where trans people can not be scared to be, to live, right? Um, how can we create a world to where, um, you know, all of us are not stressed every time that we walk out of our homes, if we have one, uh, thinking that we are going to be um, uh, harassed or, you know, or, or possibly even killed, right? Um, you know, um, Lord, uh, our sister, Lord's, Lord's sister Hunter, um, mm -hmm. she said that, you know, trans women uh, walk with targets in our back, right? Trans women of color specifically. Um, and, you know, just to think of that, it's crazy, right? And so how do we influence a better world for all of us? And so um, what I am doing or what we are doing, because obviously the work that I do, it's, I don't just do it myself, right? Like I'm just, I'm, I'm just the pawn in the, in the game, right? Like in the, in the chess set, if you will, right? I am, you know, it, it's a collective thing that we're all doing, right? Like not just the people who work here with us, but, you know, all of you who are present, right? Um, contribute in some kind of way and can contribute. And I hope that you will contribute. Um, and so um, for me, like what, what I, I am supposed to be doing is like figure out a way for us to get to that vision, right? To get to that world. Well, at the same time, I understand that even though I may not be able to see that world, right? Um, that I, I am contributing to that world, right? Um, and so that in itself, it's for me, um, what helps me to keep on going. And, um, but I also want to say just, you know, really uh, directed to your question is, you know, I hope that also um, all of us, you know, transes and all of us understand that that world is possible, right? And that we do have power and that we need to exercise our power to ensure that we get to that world. Um, and, you know, that we understand that we have power individually, but also collectively, right? And, mm -hmm. And we can transform systems and we can create a better world for all of us. We just need to do it. We cannot be complacent and say, look, that's not my issue. That's not impacting me. Um, we need to be able to use our privilege to ensure that those changes happen. Mm, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly thinking through as well, how do we build some more of these um, collective relationships. As you say, nobody works independently in our collective move for liberation. Um, and these, these collective relationships are, are really going to be essential as we see that there's more that binds us um, than separates us or, or makes us distinct as we push for this liberation. Um, and speaking of relationships, you know, as, as I was introduced, I'm part of, um, you know, a, a working group that really is looking at, you know, the relationship between the academy and our community. And as you very well know, that relationship over time has been, you know, really harmful and, you know, really extractive, especially towards trans communities of color. Um, whereby our knowledge seems to not be good enough when it's told out of our mouth, but good enough when it's told from someone else's perspective. And so my question is, how, in, in your perspective and from your experience, what is at least one thing that the academy could do and researchers who do research with and for and, and on trans community um, 
could do to sort of begin repairing the relationship with our community um, in an effort to, to create sort of more ethical and justice oriented research that actually reflects our needs. Well, first I want to acknowledge you for your bravery to, you know, to, yeah, to be a, a PhD student, to, you know, to like, that's just incredible and amazing. And I hope that um, others can be inspired by you and like really get to it, right? Because we need you, right? Like we need you to occupy the spaces that are not traditionally made for us, right? Um, and so thank you. Thank you so much for serving as a source of inspiration. Um, you know, I have been part of Cacademia, right? Because, um, um, you know, I, 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 I do have a master's degree and, um, and I, you know, I do have a master's degree in Chicano Latinx studies, right? Uh, and so like a lot of those places are super marginalizing and super uh, oppressive, um, but I am so glad that there were some people who uplifted me, who uh, helped me to push, right? And for me, uh, and I'm not completely sure how it is for you, but um, you know, when I, when I got my master's, I was going in person, right? Like I was going in campus. Um, and I am, a, I was a non-traditional student, right? So most of my courses were like a night after work, whatever. Um, and all throughout, I was the only openly identified trans person, you know? Um, and so to me, it was very um, lonely, you know, in some ways, right? Because but at the same time, I knew of the importance of, um, you know, getting those letters after our names or my name. Um, and so I hope that, you know, more people get into academia and I hope that, you know, I, I, I do have to acknowledge though that, you know, um, you know, I, other academics, right? Like when we, some of the research that we've done as an organization um, have been done because of amazing and intentional and beautiful people who are siblings, right? Like, um, you know, in 2012, we did the transvisible uh, trans Latina um, and immigrant, trans Latina woman and a US society uh, who was in partnership with um, Carla Padron and um, the University of Minnesota. Um, also, you know, Jack Cavares, who is also a graduate of UCLA. Um, you know, with the, the, um, the uh, state of trans health, right, uh, study. And so, you know, th it is possible, right? But those individuals who have, again, the privilege and the knowledge and the academic knowledge, um, you know, if there's an intention, they could support us into not just doing research, but also, you know, um, include us in, um, you know, writing academic journals or whatever it is, right? Like um, those things are important, but I, I also want to say that I think it's important for, you know, perhaps this, you know, uh, this department, right? To create paths for trans women to be part of academia, right? Um, you know, we, we, have, um, we have built a partnership with USC, USC Keck Medicine uh, for, um, you know, for us to be able to build a gender health center, um, but we're also, um, doing two scholarships for people who want to be part of the health care industry, right? Who are part of our community. And so mm -hmm. I think it's important for us to create paths that will support our community, um, you know, to get from point A to point Z, right? Um, 
and we need to be intentional and like really invest in the lives of our community. Um, and like, I think also, you know, academia should acknowledge the humanities, right? Like um, also ethnic studies, right? Um, are super important and, you know, they want to eliminate them. Like that is crazy. And so we need to ensure that um, we understand that, um, that this, these departments are, are also integral into uh, everyday people's lives, right? Um, and they are integrated into the science and they are integrated into uh, all of this, all of these other departments that people think are better or, or they, they deserve more funding. You know, I, I think we need to understand that, um, you know, that our lives are also important and we need to be tell them and like publishers need to understand that it's important that we publish the stories that in in yeah I mean academia is just it, it's it's own thing like really it's it's it has so many issues um, but there's ways to address those issues yeah definitely and and I really appreciate and I really resonate with you know your your call to create more pathways so that you know, folks like us can be equally and equitably represented in spaces producing knowledge about us. Um, you know, if we're good enough to be researched, we're good enough to be at the table doing the research. Um, I want to make time now for a question that has come from the audience. Um, and so I'll read this because it's a bit of a statement too. You know, you touched on many topics that at the core are about our existence as women, as women of color. And I'm interested in knowing your thoughts on what productive allyship in our current and, and, and ongoing changing world is. Um, and how do we move the conversations from guilt to solidarity and joy? Um, thank you so much for that question. I think it's um, it's 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 a complicated question. Well, no, it's it's a great question with a complicated answer. Um, um, I, I think the first thing that we want that I, I hope that people do is um, that they learn to to mean what they say and say what they mean, right? If we are if you're saying that you um, that you're an ally, right, as people want to call themselves, right, then you can be halfway, right? Like, um, you know, I actually prefer to call those individuals comrades, right? Because um, you know, my understanding of an ally is, is it's like a term that was used like in war, right? Um, and allies are just like, they just come and they go, right? And so for me, a comrade is one who, you know, is there to be with you in solidarity, right? Um, and uh, who will walk with you through the finish line, right? Um, and so I, I think, we need to be truthful to ourselves, right? Um, if we say that, you know, we support our community, right? Then uh, we need to show it and not just say it, right? Um, again, you know, there, there, there's simple things that people can do, right? Um, like, um, you know, like something as simple as like, if you see something, say something, right? Um, if you, and this happens like with our families, with our friends and all of this, right? Like if we hear or see that a member of our community is being degraded and um, being violated simply because of who we are, you know, even if it's verbally, we should say something, right? Mm -hmm. If you're saying that you're, that you're a supporter, that you're a comrade, that you're an ally, however you want to call yourself, right? Um, then say something. If if you see like someone is being attacked on the streets, right? Instead of turning around, 
you know, like do something, right? Um, don't just, you know, don't just think that that's not your issue because it is your issue, right? Um, as a woman of color, or even just a, a, as a woman, even if you're not of color, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're an academic, right? Like I, I was just saying like, I we're looking for someone to help us write grants, right? Um, you know, we can honor obviously people's time, but you know, if you have the willingness to support and not just our organization, but there are other translate groups and organizations, right? That can use people's support, right? Um, you know, if you want to donate, I mean, that's also great, right? Um, you know, the donations that we get, we support trans women who are in immigration detention, who are in prison. We send them commissary money, you know, um, or we support them with, you know, whatever people may need, right? Um, many of the people that we see here are undocumented. They don't have, they don't even have a status, you know, court cases are pending and they don't have court until like the next, you know, two years or something. And so like, what are we, what do, what do they do then, right? And so like, that's a systemic issue, but, um, but those donations support us to support them, right? Because this is unrestricted. Mm -hmm. um, but also again, you know, um, support other translate groups and organizations. Um, here in Los Angeles, there are um, at least other three translate groups that I know. Uh, one of them is uh, Gender Justice LA. Uh, the other, other one is the Unique Women's Coalition. Uh, and the other one is um, the, uh, this, the Unique Women's Coalition. Um, there's a uh, Trans Can Work. There's another organization that's called Trans Can Work. Um, and so, you know, those are translator organizations and we should, we should support translatorship. Um, so, and, but there's so many, you know, around even here in, in LA and, and in surrounding areas, right? Like there are other groups, uh, translator groups and organizations that don't necessarily have the infrastructure, for instance, that we have, right? That they don't have access to funds. Um, I remember when, when we started, you know, we actually, got our first official grant in January 2016. And so since 2009 to 2015, we were just doing our work, you know, with the donations that would people provide, right? Um, because we didn't have access to funds. Um, but now, you know, like we we're supporting other translate organizations. So you can support us, you can, in, in turn, we can support others, uh, but I would also suggest to, um, you know, to support other translate groups and organizations. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just add on the allyship. I think I always think of ally as a verb, so an action word. It's not necessarily a title that we hold. And um, it's not just about what you do when I am in the room. It's what you do when I'm not in the room too that matters. How are you? addressing transphobia and hate in your own groups where trans folks aren't even around what are you doing in the room when we aren't in the room that I think also matters. Um, I'm wondering how we are doing on time because there are some extra questions I would love to ask. Yes and don't just think of us on pride you know pride yes because our existence is 365. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, if for, for, for our trans-led orgs that uh, don't really have that strong infrastructure, if you've got some grant writing experience, donate your time. If you've got some fundraising experience, donate your time. You know, what skills can you bring to help with the elevation and, and the equitable support of the communities that need it most? Yes, organize a party, a fundraising party, a home party, by your colleagues, your friends, you know, your wealthy people, friends. So we can raise some funds. But come also to our events. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so one more question. Um, so you've mentioned, you know, Silvia Rivera as being a great inspiration. Um, who else has been uh, inspiration to you growing up 
um, and this could be in the past or, or, or present? Um, uh, well, you know, you're certainly to me, again, is an inspiration. Uh, you're an inspiration to me, so thank you. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do have to say that, you know, when I started my journey, um, when I was reborn, you know, like almost 25 years ago, um, there has been certainly people along the way who has inspired me, right? Um, uh, Brenda Gonzalez, uh, it's definitely one of those who, um, you know, trans woman, trans Latina, who, you know, when I first went to um, a support group, right, like she was a facilitator. So she she helped me to see the possibilities, right? Because, um, you know, back in the early 90s, right, like, I mean, none of us were working. You know, it was only probably a few, um, but she was certainly one um, that, you know, showed me the possibilities. Um, certainly Maria Roman was my sister, you know, who's always inspired me. Um, Valerie Spencer, you know, has always, um, you know, inspire me and continue to inspire me. Um, I remember Mama Terry, you know, um, black trans woman who used to work on Minority AIDS Project, uh, Kelly Trambaco. Um, um, I mean, there have been so many who uh, have not just inspired me, but uh, has also, you know, helped me to see what is possible. Um, certainly, you know, young people are the ones who spark my light, you know, um, because I, I, I know that they are the light to the tunnel, right? Um, that we're all going through. And so, you know, young people are the ones who always inspire me and always um, help me to understand that, you know, that there needs to be inter intergenerational work that needs to happen um, for us to get to, you know, the liberation that many, uh, many of us talk about, but very few of us really understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. And thank you so much. And we could always have long and ongoing conversations and, and questions yeah. that will never <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Bambi, for taking this time to just sort of be in conversation with me and let me ask these questions and share this space with you. It's, it's no, an honor. It is my honor. I appreciate you so much. And thank you for inspiring me um, today and always. Thank you. So thank you again, Bambi, for an ama am amazingly inspiring keynote address. And thank you and Vanessa both for the dialogue and the Q&A. Um, that was just, just so wonderful. So um, I'd like to begin our award ceremony by honoring Bambi with the first award. So uh, on behalf of CSW, I am proud to honor you with the 2022 Center for the Study of Women's Distinguished Leader in Feminism Award for your many years of activism and advocacy on behalf of Latina transgender women, trans people of color, and LGBTQ people. You truly are an example to all of us, and I would like to thank you for all that you've done to build community for transgender people. Um, thank you so much for being here to accept the award today. Uh, we will, of course, send you this award plaque uh, in the mail. Thank you, Mambi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. It's, it's so beautiful, and uh, I so appreciate it. Um, it's certainly an honor. Again, um, thank you for acknowledging me as um, the woman that I am, and um, thank you for all the work that you do. I think, you know, you're certainly instrumental in influ influencing, um, you know, the, the way others think. And I, I appreciate that you are thinking of us, 
right? Like thinking of our community um, as being part of the work that you're doing. Um, so thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the opportunity and for, for this honor. It's such a great honor. Thank you.